Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you the orchestrator pattern with an example in Go. So what is the orchestrator pattern? In his book, Building Event-Driven Microservices, Adam Bellamier describes this pattern as the one where a central microservice issues commands to and awaits responses from subordinate worker microservices. The name comes from the real-life musical orchestra where a single conductor or orchestrator is in charge of telling each musician when to play. Therefore, the orchestrator defines the workflow logic as well as any coordination needed. So what are the pros of using the orchestrator pattern? It's relatively easy to implement and maintain because all coordination is in one place. The workflow is easier to define because of the nature of the centralized orchestration. What are some of the cons of using the orchestration pattern? There is coupling between the orchestrator and the services being used. Any upstream changes require changes in the orchestrator. There is a single point of failure because the orchestrator is in charge of the workflow and if it fails, everything fails, even if the other services are working correctly. As usual, the link to the final example is in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out. What we're going to be doing here is implementing three hypothetical calls to three hypothetical services. The way we're going to be defining those services is just by defining a function that has some sort of timer to indicate the delay between an actual server and the response that we are supposed to be getting from them. We're going to be implementing that in, the, in a few different ways to show you how you can do this using uh, a package that I described in one of my videos related to uh, pipelines. I'm leaving the link to that one as well in the description. You need a little bit of experience using uh, Go routines as well. So that introduction to that specific feature in Go, I'm leaving the link to that one as well in the description. So let's get this thing started. So we have a function, let's call it service one, that is going to be returning a value, in this case will be an int 64, and your error typically. It's going to be receiving a context, because it's going to be making sense in a moment and for simulating the time it takes to make a request we are going to be sleeping 100 milliseconds so time millisecond and we're going to be returning the value in this case one and nil to indicate that uh, there were there was there was no failure we're going to be copying this one two more times to implement the service two and to implement the service three service three will sleep uh, return three it will sleep for for 200 milliseconds and service number two will return two and will sleep for 100 milliseconds. Now, the way the orchestrator pattern works, as I told you before, is by calling each one of the services in the order that it makes sense. In this case, for the logic that we're going to implement, it's a sequential. So we are only caring about the actual calls uh, for each one of the for each one of the services, and that's pretty much it. So these three return a value, v1, r1, v2, r2, and v3, r3. In this example, we're assuming that those services return values that we need to uh, add, and that's the final implementation of the service. So we're going to be printing out the value of v1 plus v2 plus v3. Pretty straightforward. Now, the nature of calling services that happen in this case functions that happen to have a similar signature which in this case will be a function called with context that happens to return an int and an error will create similar and duplicated error messages that will look like this so log fatal n fatal ln service one failed so let's put error, error one in this case, and in this case of error two, we do the same. In this case of error three, we do the same. So service three, service three, service two, and that's the way it works with Go. However, this is a little bit repetitive. Uh, one tip I can give you if you are doing some sort of calls that happen to be using the same function signature in Go, you can define a type, let's call it a service, that happens to be a function that receives a context and returns the same values that we are expecting in 64, an error. 
and instead of doing these three uh, repetitive calls you can define a variable right here let's call her services that happens to be a slice of service that implements the call to service 1 service 2 service 3 and with that you can actually do the, the similar call so you have a range of services and you can call service context background we have the value the error and if there is an error you fatal in again now because we want to collect the values of all three services and print them out we define a new variable called total let's call it zero so total plus equal v and then print ln total equals v or rather total so so what i did here actually okay it's complaining because of signature let's do define it in a different way to indicate instead of defining an int we're going to be using an int 64 so what we have right here which is from here to here it's equivalent to the lines that we have right here so it's a little bit easier to read it's up to you if you want to follow this recommendation for this example let me run that run it and you will see the values are practically the same so you will notice that we'll be sleeping and then in the end total is from the first call and the other one will be from the second call so this is the one that we use for the type that we describe and this one is for the one that we explicitly you know, use the three calls to service an error and whatnot. So let's remove this in particular and look at the current implementation. So if you notice, this takes about, well, the sum of all these three services in a real world example that is practically, practically expected because you are calling each one of the services one by one and depending on the time it takes, the sum of all that time will be the total time of the final request that is going to take for this specific orchestrated call. One way to demonstrate this is using the time package, specifically the time dot now the sub for subtract the original value. We can call it the start time dot now, which is when we're starting everything. And then we can call it here duration. And we can do time dot now sub start and if we run this again you will notice that now it's going to be printing out how long it took so this took 400 milliseconds at least 400 milliseconds and again this is because the sum of all these three is 400 at least so with that being said what if we although we are an orchestrator and we're calling each one of the services individually what if we don't need to wait for the response we only care about the consolidation of all those three responses which in this case this is what we're doing we're receiving the values and we are just adding all of them and returning those back which in this case will be printing out the value in the standard output in that case if you want to do that you can run this asynchronous which is one of the powers of using go in this case a package that i like to use called it's called error group and what this does is it uses go routines that allow you to uh, synchronize the calls and if one of them fail it will tell that to the final uh, response and therefore you can uh, stop the other ones that were running already let me show you how this works first we need to call the error group error group with context and passing a context background in this case it could be a context that you have this thing will return the group and another context that you can use for passing down to your go routines so what we have to do next is use the function called go in the variable uh, g which is the group this receives a function and an, is supposed to return an error in this case we need to pass up this here and instead of print fatal ln the value right there we're going to be returning if error 
is different than nil we're going to be returning the error and just for now I will, I will revisit this we're going to be adding the result and returning nil to make this wait because we are launching goroutines all over here we need to wait for those to complete in order to do that we just call g wait and if there is an error we are going to be printing out that value to indicate that there was an error in one of the goroutines this example um, it's really useful or rather this package is really useful like I said when you're trying to run concurrent goroutines and allows you to coordinate those and not wait for all of them you can do something similar using channels uh, manually but I prefer doing this way because it's easier to implement so group fail that would group and the error so in this case if we run you will notice that now the time is a little bit less oh I forgot to do the mod tidy to download the packages don't forget to do that and then you run uh, context is declared and never used and that's because I missed it here you need to pass in that context to the uh, subroutines uh, go root, sub go routines. so in this case if you notice instead of taking 400 milliseconds now it's taking 200 milliseconds which in this case will be uh, the maximum it could take because if you remember the longest one it's actually taking 200 milliseconds right here so this is a cool thing again it depends maybe you need to do literally expect and wait for the response from your request and do something with it but in our case we don't we don't really care we only care about the final result so one thing that i have to do next is fix this call right here that to prevent race conditions remember we're running this as a goroutine above right here and we are accessing this value directly so we don't want to do that it may cause some unexpected values so in order to fix this we're going to be using a package in the standard library called sync slash atomic and atomic includes a um, function called add you in add in 64 which matches the type that we're using we need to pass in the pointer to the variable that we're going to be modifying and the new value this returns the new value that was added in this case we don't really we don't really care about it in particular we don't care about this value if we would we would be using it right here in this case like i said it doesn't matter so we run this again and the values will be exactly the same that we did before and that's it this is the example of orchestration using go so that's it thank you for watching this is the orchestration pattern with an example in go i will talk to you next time take care and stay safe see you